On Labor Day weekend of 2006, um, he was just skydiving with his friends and uh, he landed too hard and he broke his left femur and uh, the way that he hit with his helmet on, uh, he fractured his skull and he had a little cut like right there on the back of his head. They took him right into surgery to fix his femur and I guess he got a titanium rod um, in his leg. He did have a neurosurgeon come in and do a ventriculostomy which is, um, it's just they have put a hole in his skull and they had to drain um, fluid from around his brain. Um, and that was, that was the part where uh, we were very concerned with. They thought that he um, had a good chance of recovering, um, that he was gonna be in ICU for a while, um, that it was gonna take some time to get rid of the fluid on his brain. Um, they thought that he was going to have uh, quite a bit of a rehab. They told us that at the end of the road um, that Josh would probably be, you know, about almost 100%. Well then he started to, uh, he got an infection, he got a staph infection, which was not good news. And they also told us um, that, you know, that that happened quite a bit in um, the ICU and in a situation like Josh's. So, you know, as lay people, not medical people, we believe them, and they seem confident that they were going to clear that up for him. Six days later, after starting rehab, um, Josh's fever spiked to 103, and they did a lumbar puncture, uh, and they found out that he, in fact, had yet another uh, healthcare-acquired infection. It was a bacteria that was in his cerebrospinal fluid um, that was causing a lot of pressure to be put on his brain. He evidently had a uh, kind of like a domino effect where it created um, him to be, caused him to be paralyzed mm -hmm. down to his thoracic spine. Mm -hmm. um, so therefore it basically made him a ventilator dependent mm -hmm. uh, quadriplegic forever. Mm -hmm. And um, he died two weeks, mm -hmm. two weeks later.